UFOs over the Wanakue Reservoir, New Jersey. The night of January 11th, 1966, Wanakue police officer Joe Sisko was on patrol around 6.30 p.m. Sisko got a call from dispatch requesting him to check out a light near the Raymond Dam. Soon, Sisko's radio was flooded with talk of something flying above the reservoir. Something's burning a hole in the ice, something with a bright light on it, going up and down. Oh boy, something just landed in front of the dam. That's when Sisko saw the bright white spot silently hovering above the water. Before long, thousands rushed outside to catch a glimpse of the object flying over the reservoir. The event made headlines across the region. But it wouldn't become a national sensation until October when the UFO returned once again for its most spectacular showing. This is an actual photo of the UFO taken, where you can see the beam of light going over the ice on the reservoir. This was published in the Patterson Morning Call, October 13th, 1966. Truly remarkable photograph for the 60s. Multiple UFOs were sighting starting October 10th, first spotted by Sergeant Ben Thompson near the Westbrook Road's Dead Man's Curve. Within minutes, hundreds of calls were made to local police reporting a light even brighter than the sightings in January. Multiple newspapers published this along with comic books. Denials and conflicting explanations from the government agencies about the event only added energy to the national intrigue. Dr. John Pagano interviewing Sergeant Ben Thompson. Was the Air Force notified? Well, doctor, to tell you the truth, I don't know at this time, but it wasn't within 15 or 20 minutes after we sighted this thing that there was at least six helicopters, and I would say from 20 to 30 to 40 planes flying over the same area where I said on the radio, on the police radio, that it disappeared. What happened over the Wanaku Reservoir in 1966 remains a mystery. All I can say is that there was definitively something there. I don't know what it was. Joe Sisko. Hi everyone, it's Robert Earl White with the Order of Light. Now most of you may not know this, but in my search to find out my own family's UFO incident, the Lower Alloways Creek incident, my own UFO crash story that happened back in April 1991, I have been on a quest to find other UFO sightings that are credible in the state of New Jersey. And this has led me down the path to find out about the Wanaku Reservoir. I actually have friends that live up there and for the past three or four years or so, I have been researching the area which has so much history behind it. And these aren't the only incidents that this area has had. As we know that there are so many accounts of creeks, streams, lakes, dams, and reservoirs that have had UFO activity over it. And it's very peculiar and strange that this craft has some sort of light beam interacting with the ice that was on the reservoir. Very much like my case that happened on Lower Alloways Creek. You know, it's strange that these crafts choose to interact or park their crafts directly above shallow beds of water, marshlands, etc. Also, something very interesting with the Wanaku case, there was a lot of discrepancies with what the government was saying what it was versus the people on the ground, including police officers and many 
people of that community that have been deemed to be credible and the accounts the military and government saying that it was a weather balloon and people on the ground saying it wasn't a weather balloon you know weather balloons don't just hover in one spot and interact and shoot a laser beam out the bottom of it you know it don't work that way and one thing i've learned this is the classic rope-a-dope where basically anytime the government says that it's theirs it's a weather balloon it's swamp gas it's some sort of military craft you always know that that's actually probably some sort of extraterrestrial craft because when it's actually the military's crafts weather balloons that's when they choose to blame it on aliens they've done this over and over our military and these black projects have tons of their own crafts and anytime that's seen by the public they will pin that on extraterrestrials and anytime it's extraterrestrials they will come up with some outlandish explanation or say it was one of their experimental planes flying around this is the classic rope to dope you know it goes on over and over and over again in this entire community and a lot of the mainstream on their reporting about these incidents for this being 1966 this craft and this photograph which was at nighttime is really credible and you can see it quite clear for it being such an old photo now with my story which happened april 21st 1991 all right 10 18 p.m here in southern new jersey in a small town called lower alloway's creek in the creek behind our house is directly connected with the Salem County Nuclear Plant, a highly patrolled area, especially by Dover Air Force Base. And on that fateful night at 10, 18 p.m., my family, my aunt next door, my mom, her two friends, myself, we witnessed a very long, very long and thin triangular craft with three blue lights on the corners of it, which allowed us to know it was triangular and a very bright white light in the center of it silently hovering above the tree line directly behind our house. Directly behind our house, we had an old bridge right there, one car at a time. And there was the Lower Alloways Creek surrounded by marshland with foxtails, etc. As we were all watching this craft, it suddenly exploded and my mother called 911. And what happened afterwards has been known as the Lower Alloways Creek incident. After that, we had two cars arrive. Out the one car, two men wearing black suits. Out the other car, a gentleman dressed in Air Force attire, which they went to the extremes and the lengths to threaten my 22-year-old single mother that if she didn't report it as a helicopter, here comes that rope dope again, a helicopter that they would take me, her three and a half year old son away from her, single mom. This is how they operate. They also told my mom what to say, what to report, when all the national media, TV shows, newspapers, which I've documented, there's so, so much evidence on this, multiple police calls, multiple people reporting it, other witnesses working for EMS squads, the fire squads, etc. There were so many people involved with this case and the evidence is remarkable, have many military transcripts of their reports of what they said and responded to. I have documented all of this. You can find the link in the description for the four part documentary, so make sure to check that out. I hope that all of you enjoyed this and on my quest to find out more about my own experience here in New Jersey, it's put me down the line to research many other cases here in New Jersey and I plan to do more videos of highly credible stories backed by evidence and multiple sources. So it's going to be great. I hope you liked it. You can give this video a big like and please subscribe to the page because YouTube has been unsubscribing a lot of people from my page subscribe give the video a big old like and please share it if you feel led i would greatly appreciate it you can find donation links also in the bottom my paypal and venmo i really appreciate all the love and support i'm glad to start to get back into things i have a lot of amazing stories to come from the state of new jersey so stay tuned thank you once again this is robert earl white with the order of light and i will see you next time